In this video, we become familiar with the structure and use of Turing machines that perform simple computations. Alan Turing, a British scientist and mathematician, wanted to answer the question, is every mathematical task computable? In 1936, he invented a theoretical machine, the Turing machine, to answer this very question. A Turing machine consists of an infinite tape. This will contain a list of acceptable symbols, characters and numbers. In this Turing machine, the list of acceptable symbols is 1, 0 and a square, and the square represents a blank square. The Turing machine consists of a read-write head. The read-write head can only be looking at a single square on the tape at any one time. It can either read the data stored there or write new data over the top, replacing the current contents. It consists of a control unit. This is effectively a finite state machine that details how many states the Turing machine can be in, the initial start state of the Turing machine, which states are halt states that will stop the Turing machine, and a set of transition rules which tell the machine what to do when it finds itself in a certain state, i.e. how to move from one state to another, and how the data on the tape changes. This Turing machine is designed to find the first one on the tape to the right of the current read-write position, replace it with a zero, and then stop on that data item. Here is the finite state machine that represents this Turing machine. On each transition arrow, we see the input received, the output for this input, and the direction the read-write head needs to move. The Turing machine starts in state zero. In the current position of the read-write head, we have a zero. The transition rule states that if we receive a zero as input, we replace it with a zero and move the read-write head one space to the right. We remain in state zero. Still in state zero, we discover another zero in the current position of the read-write head. Again, the transition rule states if we receive a zero as an input, we replace it with a zero and move the rewrite head one space to the right. We remain in state zero. Still in state zero, we discover a one in the current position of the read write head. The transition rule states that if we receive a one as an input, we replace it with a zero and move the read write head one space to the right. So we move to state one. Now in state 1, we discover a blank cell in the current position of the read-write head. The transition rule states that if we receive a blank cell as an input, we replace it with a blank cell and move the read-write head one space to the left. We also move to the halting state and end. Having arrived at the halting state, we can see we've achieved the computation this Turing machine was designed to complete. That is, we successfully found the first one on the tape to the right of the current read-write position, replaced it with a zero, and then stopped on that data item. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What is a Turing machine, and what is its basic structure? <laughs>